Micmacs opens in a minefield being cleared out by members of the French military. A mine goes off, killing one of the officers. The sad news reaches the family of the officer. Among the father's personal effects is a picture of one of the mines, with the manufacturer's logo. The wife of the soldier is grief-stricken to the point of catatonia, and is soon institutionalized. The son of the family is then transferred to a boarding school. The son, Basil, rose up to be a man, an employee of a video store. One night, he's minding the store, and two parties drive by the video store, exchanging gunfire. Basil exits the store to see what's going on. After a collision, one of the guns flies in the air and hits the ground, firing off a bullet that hits Basil in the head. In a sad twist of fate, the doctors can't do anything. If they remove the bullet, Basil could die. If they keep the bullet in... Basil could also die. In a callous coin toss, the doctors agree to keep the bullet in. After Basil recovers, he finds out he no longer has a job. However, his replacement gives him a bullet casing. Looking at the logo, he keeps it. Poor and alone, Basil befriends Slammer, a convict that was pardoned because the guillotine used as his execution failed to decapitate him. Yes, folks, that's correct. The French continue to use the guillotine as a means of execution, I think at least up to like the mid-1970s. Slammer introduces Basile to his other friends, the contortionist Elastic Girl, the matriarch Mama Chow, the cliché-loving Remington, former human cannibal Buster, and the measuring savant Calculator. While scavenging for trash for his newfound family, He sees the building with the same logo as the landmine that killed his father. Right across the street from that building is another logo found on the bullet casing. Basil decides immediately to take revenge on the two CEOs of the companies that ruined his life and the lives of others. Undoubtedly, Micmax is the most socio-politically charged of the films we're going to look at in this episode. Junet does very little to hide his contempt for arms manufacturers. Mick Max is his own version of Fritz Lang's Manhunt, a film purely made to express a political opinion on a hot-button topic. That I can appreciate. The film has a message, but Junet does not let the message overtake the film. He keeps the film in the realm of entertainment and lets the film show us his feelings. All too often, films come to a screeching halt to labor the audience with proselytizing. I found the film very enjoyable, and it was a return for Junet's darker edge, which I miss so much in Amelie. With the band of misfits, the film feels like Junet's version of a superhero film. And this is not out of the realm of possibility, considering Micmax was released in 2009. The year previously, we were given Iron Man, The Dark Knight, Hellboy 2, and Punisher Warzone. Despite the strong feelings of Junet on arms manufacturers, he still has his moments of whimsy. One clever gag has Basil urinating in drain gutters of an apartment building. The camera follows the drainage pipe to a dog sitting on the sidewalk in front of the spout. Urine comes pouring out in comedic fashion, much to the shock of the dog owner. The film does a callback to Delicatessen, referencing the musical duet between Louison and Julie. The methods of revenge are the stuff of silent comedy, a Rube Goldberg setup and execution. There are moments where Basile engages in brain game exercises to help maintain his faculties. They are done in a CGI twist on the stop-motion works of Terry Gilliam from Monty Python. The budding romance between Basile and Elastigirl is right in the vein of Louison and Julie. Some of the music by Raphael Beau plays up the silent movie antics of Junet. The music piece you heard in the segue, Mic Max à la Gare, does just that. Then you have the ending theme, which indulges in the cranky mechanical beat that reflects the Rube Goldberg element. Danny Boone as Basile is a character you can get behind. Even when he's down on his luck, he's still too proud to let it show. While with little money, he still donates to a street busker. When offered a free meal by a church, he acts like he's waiting for a taxi. 
Basil being a movie buff and working at a video store made it easy for me to relate to him. André de Solier and Nicolas Marie are two dimensional bad guys as the CEOs of the arm manufacturers. They're cartoonish, but they are fitting for the film that Junet is presenting audiences. The film is meant to be taken seriously, but not too seriously that it can't be enjoyed. Jean-Pierre Mariel as Slammer and Yolande Moreau as Mama Chow do well as the family heads of the outcasts that adopt Basile as their own. The supporting cast of the family have their moments to shine. Dominique Pignon, Omar Sy, Julie Ferrier, Marie-Julie Bop, and Michel Cermates have a manic chemistry together. Nick Max was another solid offering by Junet. He touched on a serious, dark subject, but managed to keep his lighter stylings intact. Danny Boone as Basil was a great protagonist. The outcasts were filled with undeniable talents. The music score was a highlight. This one doesn't get talked about as much as the previous films, and this one more than deserves your attention.